So hello everyone. I hope you can hear me. It's um, my name is Anastasia Boyko. I'm project manager of STEM Alliance, and I will be moderating this session. Um, welcome to this webinar titled "Experiences and Resources to Run an Internet of Things Hackathon," co-organized by STEM Alliance and Scientix. Um, along with me, we have my colleague Bjorn under Scientix account. He will be helping you with any techni technical issues. If you experience any, please write in chat to him so he can help you to improve uh, the experience of this uh, webinar. We also have in the room our uh, today's speakers. There will be three of them. And I will be uh, talking about the webinar topic in a minute. Uh, so we organize this webinar to give teachers an understanding of new ways of encouraging students to make them interested in STEM subjects and STEM careers. And for this webinar, we, we invited dedicated professionals to share their experience, knowledge, and advice for you, for participants, on how to make their STEM your STEM classes more attractive, um, in particular by organizing a hackathon. Uh, so this topic is interesting not only for teachers, as I understand, but to other audiences who might be joining today. And participants will also learn how they can gain and strengthen their IT skills with the help of Cisco Networking Academy courses. Uh, uh, I'm happy to tell you that this webinar is a special one, as it is dedicated to currently ongoing um, STEM Alliance's Back to School campaign that aims to equip teachers with knowledge and, uh, about STEM and inspire um, as well as support them in their teaching practices. And in the end of this webinar, you will learn more about uh, um, activities we are planning for you. But now I would like to move on and introduce our speakers for today. Uh, with us today, we have Simon Avsanikov. Uh, he works at Cisco Networking Academy. He is a technical manager. Uh, we have also Ivan Rousseler. He is managing director at Belgian IT Academy Support Center. And Vadih uh, Zatar. Um, a, he works for Cisco as well. He's a global partnership lead at corporate affairs there. Uh, we will first invite our speakers to deliver their presentation in a, in a second. And uh, at the end of the session, we will have 15 minutes to you, dedicated to your questions and answers. Um, you're open to, you're uh, welcome to post these questions starting from the beginning in the chat throughout the webinar. And uh, in the end, we will dedicate some time to address these questions to to, to our speakers of today. And um, this is all from my side. <laughs> and I'm leaving the floor to our first speaker for today, Simeon. So enjoy. Hello. Can you please confirm that you can hear me? Uh, yes, can you we can hear you. that you can see my uh, video. Well, uh, I will not be showing anything very much interesting with my head. It will be just speaking. <laughs> However, however, so that you just can imagine who, who I am, so you can you can have my picture. <clears throat> so uh, let us start with with today's webinar. It should be a very interesting session because we have collected here uh, uh, in in this panel, we have collected people from from Cisco and Cisco Networking Academy and our partners, the most uh, the most knowledgeable people from uh, well at least. From not only from European region, but uh, maybe even from worldwide, uh, who are very experienced in running IoT hackathons. So I will start, and after that, I will pass the microphone to our uh, dear colleague Ivan from uh, Brussels, and after that, my colleague from uh, <clears throat> my colleague from uh, America region, Vadia, will uh, will also support this discussion. Today we have three parts in our session and we made these parts to be consecutive so it will be following one after the other. I will start with, uh, with a short story how do we help to run uh, hackathons as Cisco Networking Academy and what resources we do have for that. And then after that my colleagues will explain you in detail 
um, what, what, how does it feel to, to run the IoT hackathon with real students, sometimes with hundreds of students uh, physically located in, in, one, um, in one place, and uh, we, can, we can go through the process. So before, before I start my, my story, our journey into, into the opportunities of, uh, into learning opportunities, how to, how to become a professional in running an IoT hackathon, I need to speak a little bit about IoT world. Now, as we know, IoT, the Internet of Things, uh, this term is not, not very uh, young already because it exists for, well, a number of years now. And uh, my opinion is that IoT, Internet of Things, is not the technology. It is not, uh, it is not an industrial solution. It is not the technology itself. Uh, is it the concept? Mm, yeah, maybe. Is that the vision? Probably. Uh, maybe it is even a marketing term that, uh, that makes everyone mm, think about it and be inspired about it. So IoT can be really different. IoT can be related to smart home automation, for example. It can be related to smart city can be related to uh, factories and smart production and automation of industrial processes. It can be wearable electronic devices uh, like, and, and other, other, other areas of implementation of the idea of Internet of Things. But in all cases, uh, the IoT is about connecting different things and not only the things together uh, with, with a network. So we can connect things, we can have smart shoes, connected to some smart process, connected to some smart bot or, or robot, uh, to some automation process, and uh, finally connected to the, to the network, to the cloud, and available uh, anywhere at any time. So that's why we call it Internet of Things. It's very different, but it is our next really big thing in life, and even today it's already it's already happening. Uh, in the office where I'm working, we have smart lighting, we have smart heating. When I'm entering the room, the room understands that I'm there and turns on the light. And we have very many examples on the Internet of Things. But we, we also love to do things, to do some practice, to do a lot of hands-on activities with our students. And we were thinking, how can we, how can we implement Internet of Things uh, idea, Internet of Things knowledge, Internet of Things concept, together with our students so they can, so they can build some mm, very own solutions. And um, we were looking for different ways how to do that. And finally, we decided, OK, 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 let's do something very simple. Let's take uh, some prototyping electronic uh, components like Raspberry Pi, Arduino microcontrollers, some, some sensors, some actuators. And let's try to build some smart prototype. Uh, and the logic would be, could be very simple, like if something happens, if Simeon is coming into the room, hmm, uh, we have a sensor there, a motion sensor, I'm in the room, and then it turns on the light, the automation process turns on the light. So uh, we were thinking how to engage our students into that, and we came to several interesting educational solutions. At Tuscan Working Academy, we, we have done a lot of workshops about IoT really even very quick ones, like to do, uh, to make one sensor, uh, put the actuator, like, uh, I don't know, it could be the light sensor, and the light, light is on, uh, the actuator can open the, the window to, to let some fresh air enter into the room, for example, in different scenarios, like if something, then something. Uh, we are doing some workshops about it, and that's a nice thing to do. Uh, but also, we designed, uh, the thing that we get called, that we called cre creaton, which means uh, creating inspiring ideas in the sense of hackathon. Uh, maybe not necessarily doing the physical prototype, but just playing and with ideation, playing with uh, solutions and, uh, and seeing who is the best here. Uh, at, at this Contour Academy, we have a special software which is called Packet Tracer. That, that software allows to simulate not only network and networking devices, but also it allows you to simulate the world of Internet of Things. In Packet Tracer, we have 
smart home automation, we have industrial automation examples, we have many smart things that can be connected to each other and to the network uh, to enable some, some uh, automation in the virtualized environment of the software solution packet tracer, which is, uh, by the way, which is free and everyone can use it. And of course, we are doing a lot of, uh, a lot of hackathons. We are using some special software solutions, like one of them is Packet Tracer, as I mentioned. Another mm, software solution is called uh, Prototyping Lab uh, application. It is running on Raspberry Pi microcomputer. We have designed this tool uh, specifically to ease life of our students in, uh, in, um, in the idea of quick and simple prototyping. So we have a lot of solutions in Networking Academy. We even have a, a special course, which is called Hackathon Playbook, and this is the methodological course about how to conduct your own hackathon, how to, how to make this event, how to make it happen. Uh, I will very quickly go uh, and explain different ways how we are handling the hackathon idea implementation. So one of them is a hackathon. Normally, we are doing IoT hackathons uh, later after my part. Ivan will tell you and show you a lot of pictures about IoT hackathons. But basically, we are doing some very simple prototyping. Uh, students are creating interesting ideas how to resolve this or that uh, problem, the real uh, life problem, the real world problem. And then students are creating their IoT solutions in a physical working prototype. It can be uh, as simple as one sensor, one actuator, and as complex as uh, many sensors, a smart logic inside, database inside, uh, even, even some uh, artificial intelligence, some big data concepts inside also can be there in that IoT solution. And usually it is a three-day activity with real prototyping, with applying real technical skills, of programming, working with Raspberry Pi, working with Linux operating system, programming Arduino controllers, using electronic components, and uh, well, a whole variety of technical skills. And in the end of third day, students are um, showing their uh, or pitching, yeah, pitching their projects in uh, in the front of jury, and and then someone uh, someone is winning. Uh, usually during hackathons, uh, students. When they arrive to the hackathon, they don't know about the subject of the hackathon. It's being disclosed only in the morning when the hackathon starts because we, we make it specifically for, uh, for so, so they cannot guess the subject and they cannot prepare their solution beforehand. Uh, and of course, uh, there is a, a long activity with a lot of facilitators, with a lot of instructors and educators who are helping students to, to, to run through the hackathon activity. And uh, finally, uh, everything is done to, to present their idea, solution, maybe a commercial plan, maybe a perspective of uh, commercialize this project and uh, maybe selling this project after that to some investors and presenting that in front of jury. Uh, another idea is a creaton, which is basically a hackathon, but a little bit short, uh, shortened into one or two days activity. Creaton is basically the same, uh, the same but the prototyping. We are not doing this heavy uh, and time-demanding prototyping stage here. It's just the work, uh, usually, usually with, with just uh, paper, you, with using your flip charts, with maybe doing some, uh, some schemes, uh, some uh, examples on the paper, block schemes, and uh, then explaining the idea in, in the presentation without doing the physical prototype. This is a great activity if you are limited in technical resources and you are limited in time. Uh, another idea is Packathon. Packathon is Hackathon inside Packet Tracer. As you can see on the picture, students are doing their projects inside of the virtual environment or of Cisco Packet Tracer, which is available at Networking Academy. Uh, and the beauty of that solution is that, again, you don't have to invest in, in purchasing the real equipment and you can decrease quite, uh, quite much the, the cost of your, your hackathon, implementing things in Packet Tracer. The disadvantage here in Packet Tracer that you pretty much you can manipulate with uh, IoT devices that are already there. If something is missing in Packet Tracer, it would be, well, at least it would be com complicated to create new devices from scratch in, in, in this environment. But uh, this is also a way to go. 
Usually hackathons uh, are done in a multidisciplinary team. Uh, they can consist in uh, maybe from starting from two participants up to five or six participants. One of the uh, one of the composition you can see here on that slide. So you you could have five different profiles. Each person, each participant of the team is very skilled in 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 their uh, area. It could be a networkers. Another person could be a maker who is very familiar about electronics, uh, ab lab things, and creating the pro prototype. Another person could be developer or coder. He can be responsible for writing a code or script to, to make the solution uh, live. Uh, designer, also important, important person because uh, your solution should have some interface and it should be, should be usable. And business expert who will actually pitch your project, who will understand the business side of your, of your, <coughs> of your project. So that's a typical, um, one of typical uh, contents and views of the team who is participating in Hackathon during three days of Hackathon. Um, for participants of this webinar, uh, I would like to, to, uh, to take your attention to several courses that we have in Networking Academy regarding uh, IoT and creation of things and Hackathons. Uh, first course would be Introduction to IoT. It's very basic, like is like 20 hours. I would say that it's a very interesting story to, to read before you go sleep. A <laughs> uh, couple, of, couple of evenings, uh, very, very good to familiarize with this course. And we have made this course available if you follow the link on the screen. The same link you can find on the re registration page where you find the link for this webinar. And this link is also now in chat. You can copy that in and paste in your browser. Uh, you can self-register yourself in this course. We have prepared these courses specifically for you and you can uh, familiarize with that course and even receive the certificate of completion when you are done. We also have some other courses and these are the names Connecting Things. Uh, this is a course for makers. This is the course that teaches students how to use Raspberry Pi, how to prototype with Arduino, how to create your prototype of your IoT solution. Another course is Big Data and Analytics uh, available for Networking Academies for pretty much all educational institutions in the world. That course is about machine learning and artificial uh, basics of artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh, IoT security is a very new special course that teaches about the security side of your IoT solution, how you can hack your Raspberry Pi or how you can protect your prototype, how you can protect your IoT solution from being hacked. Uh, these three courses are available to Networking Academies and any person who is a registered instructor of Networking Academy in the world, uh, they can complete a self-paced instructor training for those courses and start teaching those courses to students. Uh, basically, there is no need to go anywhere. You just need to familiarize this course and complete a short survey uh, to, be, to become eligible to teach these courses to your students. And Hackathon Playbook, as I mentioned, is a uh, methodological guide to organize your own hackathon. So uh, that was about the resources that we have in Networking Academy, a variety of the resources. Uh, if, you, if you have more questions inside of the course, and the link is in the chat, uh, you will find my contacts and my colleagues' content, top contacts. You can uh, feel free to reach out to us to, to find out more how to become Academy or how to become instructor or how to get access to any of those courses if you really want to use it teaching your students. Now uh, I'm <clears throat> like saving time and passing the microphone to my colleague Ivan from Brussels. Ivan, Ivan is managing our Academy Support Center and Instructor Training Center uh, in Belgium. And their organization is very experienced in running IoT hackathons throughout well, many years already. Ivan, even floor is yours. I know you have a lot of interesting things to share today. Thank you. And thank all of you for inviting me uh, to do this uh, part of the presentation. Can you clearly hear me? Yes, your yes. voice is loud and clear. Right. Thank you. So um, I'm Ivan. Ivan, Ivan, different spellings, different ways to say it from Brussels. So we are a Cisco education partner, Belgian IT Academy Support Center. Also have two hats. I also teach at 
of this university in Brussels. With PIASC, we have around 100 members from higher education, from competence centers, and regular schools. And uh, we support them in uh, innovation, creativity, and all of that. Here are a few pictures um, of my experience as a hackathon organizer. Um, when I'm talking to you about organizing hackathons, Indeed, I've organized more than 10 hackathons, but I, I'm also interested in the student's point of view, the teacher point of view, because I'm a teacher, I coach students. So now and then you will notice that I'm interested in the student side, the teacher side, the coach side, and not only the organizer. But it is important for you to know that when there is a hackathon at your institution, you need an organization team, and they do not have time to coach. They do not have time to be in the jury. They are fully active during three days, if it's a, a three-day hackathon. So here are some pictures from the, the rooms where we are working, students discussing, students making visual representations, like here on a wall. It's not directly on the wall. We use special self-attaching paper so that we don't... Um, uh, or make it difficult for schools to clean afterwards. You see happy people at the end of a hackathon, three days of ha hard work. If you are the winner, you are so joyous about that. It's, uh, it's an experience of a lifetime, similar to music competitions and sports competition. So that, that's very similar. Also, we have to prepare uh, teachers, coaches, in the new uh, evolutions of technology that might be used during the hackathon. So we, as a, as a teacher, we have to, to prepare a lot before we do a hackathon. Here are some best practices to start with. Uh, the preparation is most important. A hackathon without preparing students or teachers or coaches um, will result in um, uninteresting solutions for uninteresting problems. So we need uh, creativity, we want innovation, and we need a good preparation for that. Also, I think that the kickoff, someone uh, explaining the problem or uh, a witness of the situation that we have to solve, that should be an inspiring person. So the start of the hackathon is very important. As Semyon said, multidisciplinary teams is what we like because we tend to say that only multidisciplinary teams will win. In one occasion, it wasn't true. They laughed at me because it was a team with only boys from an IT department of the same school and still they made it in one of the hackathons. But generally, it's good to be a, a multidisciplinary team. We like to invite partners from uh, uh, Belgium, but also the Benelux and even uh, abroad, because it's uh, an interesting uh, possibility for international collaboration between schools. I believe that six competition teams is a good idea for a, a normal hackathon. And uh, the theme of the hackathon should really be a challenge. But of course, depending on the experience and on uh, the situation and the context of the students, it has to be something that they are able to solve in a team. The quality of the rooms and furniture are also very important. Also the network, because we need a network, a Wi-Fi, wireless network all the time during the hackathon. Also, we need a lot of different coaches just to be around and motivate coach students to find, uh, well, good solutions. So here, um, just as a short note about multidisciplinary teams, which um, is the most important thing of, according to us. We prefer around six teams. That's ideal, as I said. The word hackathon often um, uh, um, is misunderstood by many people I'm talking to. They think hackathon is hacking into computer systems. 
in this case, it's not, not the case. There is another meaning for the word hack in English. But I typically say to my audience, if I talk about a hackathon, it's about active learning. It's about soft skills, technical skills, and teamwork in multidisciplinary teams. That's basically what, how I explain it. It's active learning, and it's really true. It works. Preparations, as I said, no innovation or creativity without in-depth preparation. The students do not know the exact tasks they have to do, but you can prepare them without um, telling them what it will be about. Here you see some of the instructors preparing. Uh, more, most of the pictures here are instructors preparing or us visiting conferences to find ideas that we can use um, for uh, events that we like to organize. So before a hackathon, a lot of preparation, preparing the team so that coaches and organizers understand it very well. The keynote speaker, of course, should be a, a perfect witness. We have to prepare students in technology, also in design thinking, in prototyping, in pitching, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Often we need between six and ten weeks to prepare for a good hackathon. You can do it shorter or longer, but it's a good idea to have a very good preparation on different topics, design thinking, ideation, how do you solve problems, modeling, technology, prototyping, pitching. And not all students should receive the same training because we want multidisciplinary teams. Don't forget the soft skills, the pitching skills, the visualization skills, because they might make the team help to win. So design thinking practice is something you'd have to do before the hackathon itself, because we use uh, the five steps during hackathon. I'm not going to say more about that. It's easy to find more information regarding design thinking. Ideation and business modeling practice also, we have to prepare students to make visual representations, to make models of the, the business they have in mind or the solution they have in mind. Different ways of doing that. It's your own choice, the modeling that you like to use with your students. But they, will, they will need to do modeling during a hackathon. Pitch practice. Not everyone is able to deliver in schools, we say everyone has to learn to speak. I agree. But during a hackathon, you have to, to choose the best picture. And actually, we need two. We need one picture to explain the idea, to convince the jury of the idea, of the solution, etc. And we need the second person to demonstrate the prototype. Also a difficult part of the presentation, which has to be very short. We prepare students here in Brussels. Uh, often um, entrepreneurs here in Brussels organize pitching sessions, etc. So it's easy for our students to, to go to a real pitching session by professionals and find out what it is about. Of course, a lot of labs and practical hands-on sessions with students and coaches and teachers so that we understand the technology we would like to use during the hackathon better. Well, the theme of a hackathon, of an IoT hackathon, Simeon has explained, could be anything. Um, we've not organized, we, we have not only organized hackathons about intelligent assistance, about 3D, about um, things that you see on the screen here. We've also uh, organized hackathons about shopping, about democratic elections, about migration, about city marketing. So there are so many different topics that you can choose. It does not have to be the, the latest um, uh, stuff that we find on the internet. You can choose any topic. And indeed, the team should be difficult enough because the creative, the most creative team should win. And we, we don't expect a full solution. We expect a creative solution uh, from a team 
with uh, a demonstration that the idea actually works. And especially for students, we are doing hackathon as a, a training for our students. It's not essential that it is a real business idea, especially not the first or the second time they take part in a hackathon. It's an exception when they find an idea that's really applicable to business. But it's the training that I think is important for our students. So here are some pictures about the facilities that we need. We need a good auditorium. We need a shop where students can get uh, materials they would be needing for prototypes, for the modeling part. Uh, we need cameras because we like to film what's going on. There are some good films about our hackathons on YouTube, I believe, if you like to see them. Here is a, an example of uh, how we organize um, a hackathon during, during the three days. So you see there are three days mentioned in this uh, full hackathon. It begins with a, an opening, uh, an inspiration phase, because the students do not know the theme, they do not know the topic, they do not know the problems. Someone has to inspire them. And then immediately afterwards, we start with an ideation phase that could be in small groups or with the, the full group of students together getting done started on ideas and especially the first day it's not about solutions we just want to think about the problems first and make a list of all the problems that we find when when we've listened listened to the kickoff and to the keynote speaker what are the problems he mentioned and which are problems that we are interested in to solve which are problems that we are able to solve and we are not talking about the solutions immediately. Even with, our, with coaches on the first day, we try to make sure the students have a clear idea of the problem they want to solve and not how. So it's about what is it, what is the problem that we like to solve during the next day. The second day, typically we finalize the concept and we've now decided on a solution Often there are different solutions and we have to finalize and choose one. And then we, we start prototyping, uh, showing to the rest of the world that our solution might well be a very good one. And the third day especially is about the presentation, first in small groups to jury, to coaches, because the, the jury who come on the third day, they visit each individual student team table, they talk to them, they ask questions before the pitching, the coaches are around, they give good uh, tips to make the pitch better, to make the visualization better, etc. And the end is, of course, the judging and the awards uh, for, for the winning teams. Here, a quick overview of day one, a very important kickoff like the person you see here on the, on the right, explaining and motivating students to get going. And you see teams starting to work using post-its to make notes, etc. Put them on a wall or on something so that they have a, a clear idea. So it's about inspiration, ideation, consolidation. In this case, it means that's the problem we want to solve. And now let's think about how we will do that. That's day one. Then day two is very practical. You create something to show that you can do it. And other students in the team start making visual representations, uh, continue doing the modeling and start preparing pitching. And we need three types of, of uh, experts and coaches. We need internal coaches from the schools who know students, external professional coaches, who like to come and visit hackathons, because especially during a hackathon, you recognize talent. So we, we, we always, when we organize a hackathon, we have 20 or 30 business companies sending professionals, because during a hackathon, they find the best talent and they talk to students maybe about future jobs. We need technical coaches and business coaches. And then 
Day three is the important conclusion with a jury, questions to the teams, and then an award ceremony. Easy to understand. The organizers, very quick. Well, I've been an organizer 10 times, and we noticed that we need real-time people who can adapt to what happens during a hackathon. You can never know before what's going to happen. Many difficulties, and you need assistance, you need guides, receptionists, receptionists, people who show people around, etc., who, who are around to help everyone. The coaches are non-technical, technical, business-oriented, etc. Here you see a, a few pictures in various positions. We see a coach here, a coach talking, a coach listening, a coach showing something very um, uh, intensive work and we know some people like coaching a lot what we notice this girl is an example she is an old student from our school and she actually won a hackathon five years ago and now they come back to coach uh, students to uh, to find the best possible solution the jury is uh, also uh, mainly external because we like the jury to be objective and on the last day there are a lot of activities for the jury like you see here uh, visiting the stands asking questions uh, before the pitching asking questions during the pitches and then deciding who's going to um, to be the, win the winner here are some pictures of uh, pitching with two team members the documentation of a, of a hackathon uh, has to be created by every team and I must say that our juries often uh, study the documentation very intensively even before the pitching, maybe to ask better question or to do something with the information they find in the documentation. Here is an overview of the evaluation criteria we give to the, the jury. We want an easy system to judge, so they grade seven criteria with a number between one and seven, seven being the highest and best score, and then we, are, we add all the numbers to find who is the winner. And maybe um, in 15 minutes after the presentations, we can already know who is the winner. The, the, the main criteria for evaluation by the jury what is the business idea? Is it an interesting idea? What about the presentation? What about the prototype? Is it an original uh, solution? Is there a social impact that's interesting, etc.? So there are seven criteria for the jury. Then the, the awards. Award session is very important, makes some people very happy. But I've also seen that some teams thought they were going to win and they were not, were not glad when, when they find out they were not the winners. Uh, so they get a prize. Now, the prize could be a financial sum, but it's not just money we give to the winners. The, the award we give to the students, and if it's a financial sum, it, it's necessary for the next step. So we want a next step after a hackathon and students need a budget for that. It could be an international challenge with groups from other countries uh, abroad. It could be visiting uh, conferences uh, relating to the hackathon. So the next step, as you see here, uh, is uh, well appreciated by students. They are able to stand on a stage, win a second event and learn many new things. This next step is really very important. Here are my key takeaways. A hackathon offers plenty of opportunities. It's project-based learning, it's active learning, it's problem solving in a fun and meaningful way. Typically, we need a, a good preparation for a hackathon. Doing a hackathon uh, is a head start for our students because we know that life and work environments are becoming increasingly complex. So it's a good preparation. 
doing a hackathon. And we like that so many different competences are useful in order to have good results at a hackathon. And finally, we believe that a hackathon is a win-win for education and also business companies helping us, business coaching. Uh, it's a win-win. We learn business, we learn what they need, and our students may find opportunities for internships and a future job. That's my part. Now I'm handing over Thank you, Yvonne. Um, just want to make sure that the audio quality is also okay from my side. Yes. Fantastic. So, uh, thank you for the handover, Yvonne. Uh, this is this has been very interesting, even for me. So, uh, folks, I'd like to also take you now to a. Um, a different uh, direction with regards to the hackathon. So we're still going to be talking about the hackathon, but we're going to try to focus on the Cisco flavored hackathon, so to speak. So the IoT hackathon has been more around a generic uh, uh, IoT uh, activity. We want to now try to explore what Cisco has to offer within the realm of hackathons, but with its own equipment. And to do this, we're going to look at uh, the DevNet offering that Cisco uh, has uh, has in its uh, in its case. So, what is Cisco DevNet? That's the first question that uh, I'd like to uh, answer today. And this is something that we've been uh, trying to push for the past couple of years uh, across the the globe um, to provide some more information about Cisco's development uh, offering. To illustrate what DevNet is about and what Cisco's development offering is. Um, I believe that this this slide would give you a bit of an of an, of an idea, and so I'm sure that everyone on this call today either has an Apple phone or a, a Google phone or an Android phone. It might be a Google, it might be a Samsung, or it might be something else. But essentially, everyone today has an has a phone uh, with them, has a smartphone with them. Now, when you look at those smartphones, they get their usefulness from a very important thing, which is essentially the, the, uh, the App Store. It could be the, uh, the Apple App Store. It could be the Google App Store that is also called uh, Google Play, if I'm not mistaken. And so those App Stores generate essentially the value of, of these devices. If you think about it, ditch those App Stores, just stick to the phone itself. It just becomes a, a phone. So it only has texting capabilities. It only has calling capabilities. So these applications that you have on these phones are what brings this added value to the phone itself. And so when you think about development on the Google platform or on the Android platform, you think, as I mentioned, the Google Play. And on the Apple platform, you think the Apple Store. If you want to think about the Cisco development, this is where DevNet comes into the picture. Because believe it or not, Cisco does now have a, an extensive application development uh, portfolio and platform. And so we're trying here to build this analogy between what uh, those uh, companies have with their development platform and what, what we at Cisco have from a development perspective. And so every piece of product that Cisco has been releasing for the past couple of years has at its core programmability. Think about our routers, think about our switches, think about our software, WebEx Teams, for example, or pretty much every piece of hardware and or software that Cisco has been releasing, it has at its core programmability component. And the entity that is in charge of uh, working on this programmability component is called DevNet. So essentially, DevNet is our host or our gatekeeper for our application uh, development platform. So if you are currently teaching uh, Cisco courses, maybe the CCNAs, and you have the 4000 series routers, then uh, guess what? Those routers are fully programmable. So with this in mind, what we're trying to do is leverage this programmability platform that we have uh, uh, to support our students, to support our graduates in their, in their future career. And so what does Cisco DevNet really do? As I mentioned, Cisco DevNet is, an, is a group within, within Cisco. They have a community of close to 500,000 people registered, so worldwide. 
developers essentially who all together are coming to leverage what this what what DevNet has to offer to code to program Cisco equipment. So you want to do some programming on routers, you want to do programming on switches, you want to do anything that is programma programmable, maybe on Meraki access point, then DevNet is your best place to go and, and there. They also include learning tracks, they also include videos, they also include code exchanges, so plenty of tools that you can leverage in your uh, programming journey a la Cisco. And what's also important, and you probably heard those, um, those announcements, if you haven't, then we've recently released a new certification on programmability. It's called the Cisco Certified uh, Development Associate, Cisco Certified uh, Development Professional, and Cisco Certified Development Expert. Those certifications are going to be released uh, in the end of January, February timeframe, and that should tell you about the importance that we at Cisco put on the uh, notion of programmability moving forward. So IoT and hackathons are very successful and we believe in, in this approach and that's why we want to also move forward into building activities around our development platform our, uh, around the DevNet community. And so with this in mind, I want to take you to the uh, next uh, step or next phase of my, my talk here, which is essentially the development hackathons within Netacad. So Semyon and Ivan have been uh, talking about the IoT uh, component and the IoT hackathon components. We're going to give it a little twist here, and instead of just talking about the IoT, IoT piece, we're going to talk about the DevNet piece. And you're going to see that this is essentially uh, very, very similar. So what are those Netacad DevNet hackathons? They're essentially uh, uh, Netacad-sponsored uh, uh, hackathons, but with a, with a DevNet flavor. So the flavor, the underlying flavor or the underlying technology is, is, uh, is the DevNet. Um, they follow the same um, nomenclature, they, the same MO as any other hackathon. So what you saw from Ivan a couple minutes ago, they're hosted at an academy, they're hosted at a, at a partner, um, they get support from uh, our sales or our engineering teams and obviously from the Netacad. And the target audience is again students coming from one academy or from more academies. So essentially any institution currently teaching Cisco courses or interested in teaching those Cisco courses can embark on this uh, hackathon journey. And as I mentioned, we are talking here about leveraging what um, DevNet has to offer in terms of resources to create software that will help uh, uh, fix a certain problem or, 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 or get some, something sorted out in the, in the networking realm. So that's really where, where the, the DevNet piece comes into it. So hosted by Netacad can include internal uh, participants or even external participants. And I'll, I'll show you a couple of, or uh, one of our successful hackathons uh, next. Um, it does have some uh, participation prerequisites, and this is an important piece to highlight at this stage. Because we're talking about uh, programmability, obviously, um, and leveraging Cisco uh, uh, technologies, then a, a set of, of courses or a, a set of uh, competencies are needed before embarking on this, on this. So we're talking about, obviously, the Python language. So we're talking about um, a basic a Python knowledge, basic plus Python knowledge. And we're also talking about uh, DevNet APIs, which are the libraries that are used to communicate with Cisco products. So if those prerequisites are not met, then it might include a pre-event training whereby the professor or professors can set up uh, courses or a set of uh, uh, boot camps to get students on board to learn about uh, some, some extra Python topics and some of the Cisco components here. And those hackathons can come with or without a preset theme. You probably heard Ivan also talking about the, the theme piece. So in this case, you can either make it open or you can make it specific towards uh, resolving certain, uh, certain complexities. Or you can make it like a, a security-themed event or, a, uh, or just to, to give an insight or a wireless-themed event. And um, those events... Uh, those hackathons are very similar to the to the ones that you saw uh, a couple of minutes ago with the rest of the team. They can span over one or two or three days, depending on the logistical requirements. We've seen a very nice example with Ivan for a, with a three-day event. I'll share the case of a of a one-day event uh, with you. So you can 
judge uh, and see how, how things are be, being uh, literally compressed into a, a one-day event. Uh, we have started those hackathon efforts a year ago. So we've been talking about this when we started embarking on the development journey. And as you can see from the map, we, we have a few hackathons done last year, and we have a few hackathons also coming up uh, in the coming quarter. So the, the yellow spots that you see here are all hackathons happening in this quarter. So we're talking about um, August, September, and October. And obviously, we're going to be having and supporting more and more hackathons uh, throughout the years. And so to give you a, a bit of an example as to how a DevNet hackathon really happens, I have chosen a successful event that happened in my backyard in Toronto. So this happened um, around six or seven months ago in, uh, in, in Toronto, and it was hosted by one of our prime partners here in, uh, in, in Canada. Um, it was hosted at uh, George Brown College in, in downtown Toronto. It included uh, close to 60 participants from several colleges and even high schools. So interestingly, in this case, this is not an internal hackathon whereby it's only the institution students themselves, but it's more of a citywide hackathon where uh, students from different institutions were invited to participate. Interestingly enough, everyone was at a college level except uh, for one institution who's at a high school level, but it was a specialized high school and they were teaching advanced uh, Cisco courses, the CCNA and security courses. It included, uh, prior to the actual hackathon, a one-day workshop on programmability. And that was, as I mentioned, essential because of the um, because of the nature of, 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 of DevNet and the APIs that are provided within the DevNet ecosystem, it was important for uh, our professors to give a one-day uh, workshop for this uh, uh, for this for this topic. Um, there there might have been another option, something to consider here, whereby the, this content or the workshop content can be spread over several weeks in a matter of maybe one or two hours each week where students can learn about the, the APIs, the available APIs uh, from, a, from a development perspective. But the, uh, in this case, the institution chose to have a one-day boot camp whereby they, uh, they took all the students participating in a hackathon uh, uh, throughout this, uh, this, uh, this workshop. And the prizes included in-person uh, um, like uh, uh, um, gifts, we're talking about Amazon gift cards. We're talking about swag, like T-shirts and what have you. But it also included a visit to the Cisco headquarters in Toronto. So we toured the students in the Toronto office and uh, met with some account managers, some uh, some system engineers. It was it was really well very well received. As I mentioned, um, the event happened uh, six or seven months ago. We had very positive feedback from the institution, and it was so positive that they they're going to be running this on a yearly basis. Uh, so they're they're going to be uh, doing it every year uh, moving forward due to the to the success of, of this activity. Um, similarly to what Ivan has showed you with regards to the uh, schedule, this is a a crunch of the of the of the event. So you would see the actual hackathon happened only during one day. Before the hackathon, the students had to go through a pre-training uh, or 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 a boot camp or a pre-hackathon activity whereby we took them through a, a special course, a special workshop. They learned about you know, Python, some advanced topics at Python, but most importantly, they learned about the available APIs at Cisco. That's uh, one of our standard workshops that is already available for, for teachers teaching Networking Academy. So if you're a Networking Academy instructor, you can teach those courses today. Uh, so you're, so we have two of them out, and there's a third one that is also uh, that, that just got released um, a couple a couple days ago. So uh, th those were the components for the first day, and the second day was the actual hackathon. And and referring back to Ivan's presentation, who had all the topics of you know ideation, consolidation, concept, and prototyping spread across three days. It was actually crunched all the way in in one day. Definitely. They, they won't have a lot of time, but that would that accelerates the rhythm pretty pretty much. But we wanted to test it out on a one day to see how it happened, and you could see the prototyping took uh, the 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 afternoon part, and finally the the judging and the and the award. Uh, the institution built out uh, quite a lot of marketing materials and brochures, and by the way, all of these materials are available 
uh, and the institution is happy to share those with uh, with institutions, other institutions interested in in uh, running uh, this kind of a hackathon. I uh, just also want to include a few photos of the participants and the high school that that uh, that were there. You could see in the background what the projects uh, were about. So some people build us a bot, a Cisco bot, so uh, running on our platform that goes on the GitHub and analyzes uh, projects there. So and gives the health score for the project. Pretty pretty cool. Uh, some other topics that you can see a virtual assistant. Uh, in, in place whereby they, they build some sort of a help desk uh, engine that would interact with people, again, leveraging uh, the bot. And you could see um, the kids in the middle, I don't know if my mouse is, is visible here, but the, the three kids in the middle are the actual kids from the high school who build their own project. Project name is unfortunately hidden under the photo here. And there, there were the, the actual, the, uh, the, the, they rank second in the, in the hackathon itself. And that proved the the enthusiast uh, the enthusiasm and the and the energy that can come from from high school students students even if they were a little bit below par uh, to their college components uh, to, uh, counterparts. And so, with this in mind, just giving you a brief overview about it. Uh, definitely, there is a lot uh, that comes with uh, those hackathons. Uh, there are more details around the the workshops that can be given, the themes that can be covered. But essentially, if you're interested in trying this different flavor out, we are happy to support those events. We're happy to support them logistically. We're happy to support them with marketing material because this is something that we want to test out worldwide and especially in, in Europe. We have one happening um, at the end of this month actually in, in Germany involving four institutions uh, coming in together to Berlin and working together on a, on a hackathon. So we'll be providing some more information about this. But in any case, if we have some people on the call who might be interested in hosting a, a hackathon, please do contact your Cisco rep representative. So if you have a, a networking cami, then chances are you know who your Cisco rep is. And if you don't, um, I'm using uh, Semyon also because he's based out of, on, out of Europe. Please do reach out to Semyon or myself. These are our email addresses. And then Semyon will, will link you up with me. We will schedules a, a, a startup call to discuss the modality of, of running the hackathon and we'd be more than happy uh, to support you with this. Um, I'll pause and I'll turn the, the, the ball back to Semyon, I think, for some concluding points. Uh, thank you for, for listening. Well, a very quick concluding point because we are at the top of the hour. Uh, we have created the course and I, I already see a lot of colleagues enrolled in the course. On the first page of the course, we also left our contacts and different options uh, about how you can benefit more from being a Cisco Networking Academy user, how you can apply to become instructor, apply to become Academy, or just or just email us our questions and we will uh, surely support you and do our best to, to provide you the best of learning materials that we have. Uh, that's probably it, I think, from the presentation perspective. Maybe we can have some questions. I don't know, Anastasia, if we have time. Yes, thank you very much uh, to three of you for that interesting presentation. I really enjoyed listening to that. And I hope uh, teachers who joined us today and those who will watch the recording, they will learn um, a bit more about hackathons. Uh, now, we have we are uh, a bit out of time, but we I would like still to open the floor to the questions that were addressed in the chat. And maybe we can start from Vadik. Uh, so there was a question about the age of the pupils. And uh, what do you think at which minimum age it is reasonable for pupils from, from school, I mean, to start participating in hackathons? Yeah. And another aspect is, uh, is there any uh, limit of age when they participate in European hackathons or local hackathons? That's a great question. Um, and I'm sure that probably Ivan or, uh, or uh, Semyon can uh, give an answer with regards to the age lim legal age limitation. Uh, I can tell you that uh, with, the, with the hackathons that we've tested worldwide so far, we've had a lot of success starting the age of 16 and above. Obviously, uh, the 16 and 18 would require um, uh, going back to the parents to get some legal agreements if the students are planning to stay overnight. And that was the challenge that uh, we hit in the uh, Toronto Hackathon. 
um, when the students are under 18, then you need to get a legal signature from the parent that they can stay overnight because sometimes hackathons tend to, to span over a weekend, for example. So that's the concern. Now, with regards to running an actual hackathon, it's really not a problem. And we're, we were constantly amazed by the capacity of students in building uh, you know, creative uh, solutions. Um, the, the high school students ranked second, and they were simply amazing. Even the professors from colleges came back to us and said, where did you get these students from? I can't believe that a student at 15 or 14 or 16 is capable of doing this. So it's about you know local uh, you know interaction. Try to sense your 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 environment. But I don't think you need to look at this with a with an with an open mind. Thank you. All right, great answer. Thank you. About legal aspect, of course, we understand that there is, there are some um, some limitations of age and. Uh, there should be a parental consent or legal guardian signed for a uh, for a pupil. Um, but what what do you think? Maybe uh, this is an, a question to Ivan. What do you think um, the uh, reasonable age to start hackathoning? <laughs> well, the minimum, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it, it all depends on the, the the problem domain that you choose for the hackathon. I find it a very good idea to start at a very young age, even 12, 13, even no, not earlier, but 12, 13, 14 is a good age to start to learn how to co collaborate in a team and go to into a certain direction to solve something. So I'm all in favor of that because in sports and music, we start at an early age as well. Why not in this? Yes. Very good. Thank you very much. And then maybe a quick question to all of you. I know Simeon already answered to the uh, participants who asked about the uh, multilingual versions of the course you offer, uh, for, especially for Intro to Internet of Things. Um, maybe if you know or if you're familiar, is the, are there any deadlines within the course to complete activities or it's fully self-paced? It is, it is fully self-paced. Uh, the, the current class is open for throughout this school year, I think, till the end of July 2020. So um, we have plenty of time. And, uh, and as I mentioned, I, I think I will not create um, like seven or eight more classes and complicate things uh, once all the languages are just changeable from inside of the interface of the course, at least languages that we do have translation for. And uh, I think our users, or our educators can go and enjoy the course as it, as it currently is. If something is not working, please just let us know. Uh, I already got one email from one of the participants and I will help. <laughs> I'm sure we will get more and we get thank you very much and very interesting webinar in the chat. So hopefully you as, a sp as speakers of today's webinar and people who joined us enjoyed this experience. We will be sending follow-up email with a short survey to evaluate this webinar to, uh, to the participants. Uh, if they want to receive certificate, we also offer that uh, upon the um, feedback form um, completion and in the end they can and you well teachers can indicate uh, their names and uh, their their emails to send certificate to so uh, just quickly uh, go through next activities that we will have so we have this webinar successfully done and the next one will be taking place on the 20th of November uh, dedicated to the topic of careers and skills of the future. Uh, and one more thing that I want to mention, good news for all the teachers who joined. We have, uh, we have a competition launching today with LEGO Education and um, we invite teachers to apply and to submit their activities uh, in that competition until the 20th of November. Uh, so I would like to thank to our, uh, par uh, to our participants who was uh, with us today and also to our speakers, Simon, Simon Ivan, Vadih, thank you for uh, taking your time presenting uh, such an interesting topic and uh, that's all from my side. We hope to see you all in our next online events and have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you, everyone.